Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I want to welcome all of you here this morning to the uh, governor's office for an important uh, announcement. And let me, before I introduce uh, the governor, let, let me just simply say about him, uh, these are challenging times in West Virginia, um, especially in the state's energy sector and especially with coal. And while I'm a little prejudiced, I must say, fortunately, there is no one that I know of in state government who is better prepared to confront the challenges that we have faced, better organized or more familiar than the governor of our state, uh, or anybody that's more passionate about ensuring a safety net for minors and a path forward in their careers. He is obsessively committed to building a world-class workforce for our state and is equally obsessed with making sure that our minors who are displaced in this economy have a first crack at those opportunities. Um, he has driven his administration uh, to respond quickly and I think uh, hopefully effectively to deal with these challenging problems. Today's an example of how we are uh, attempting to move forward uh, in our state. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce the 35th governor of the state of West Virginia, Earl Ray Thomas. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I want to uh, thank uh, Secretary Burdett uh, for that kind introduction and Keith for all that you and your team uh, do to support workforce training in West Virginia. I'd also like to recognize and thank members of the Workforce Planning Council who are with us this afternoon. I want you to know that I meet monthly with this important group and today's event cut into our meeting time a little bit, but it's great to have so many people who are committed to building and strengthening our state's workforce here with us today. We also have a very special guest with us, my good friend, Millie Marshall, the president of Toyota Manufacturing West Virginia. Millie is a longtime advocate and supporter of our training and workforce development programs in West Virginia. So Millie, I want to thank you for joining us and for your continued partnership and support. I'd also like to recognize Bill Rainey of the West Virginia Coal Association and members of the United Bomb Workers of America, and all of our state's hardworking coal miners who were able to join us for today's event. We, and I want you to know that we will never stop fighting for you. But today, we'd like to take a few minutes to not only recognize the challenges that our coal miners face, but also talk about what we're doing to, to put you back to work and back on your feet financially. So I want to thank the coal miners for being here with us today. And lastly, I'd like to thank our Congressman, Evan Jenkins, and our entire congressional delegation for working hard to secure grant funding for workforce development at the federal level. Thank you, Evan. During my time as Senate President and now as Governor, I've made it a top priority to not only improve our state's business climate, but to strengthen and grow West Virginia's workforce to meet the long-term needs of businesses and industry operating here and provide members of our workforce with the training and opportunities they need to build a bright future. This is and has been a multifaceted, long-term approach, but that's just what it takes to address this issue. In 2013, we took a major step by signing comprehensive education reform into law. A key part of this landmark initiative was reestablishing the West Virginia Workforce Planning Council the group that I mentioned a few moments ago, to better align classroom learning with work workplace needs. What initially began as a seven-member member council was transformed over the years and now includes several cabinet secretaries and working groups from a variety of state agencies, including the Secretary of Education and the Arts, Kay Goodwin, Secretary of Commerce, Keith Burdett, the DHHR Secretary, Kara Bowling, Secretary of Veterans Assistance, Rick Thompson, Acting Chancellor of the West Virginia Community and Technical College System, Dr. Sarah Tucker, Chancellor of the Higher Education Policy Commission, Dr. Paul Hill, Workforce West Virginia Director, Russ Fry, 
the Herbert Henderson Office of Minority Affairs Executive Director, Dr. Carolyn Stewart. Mark Julian, Director of Workforce and Economic Development for the Community and Technical College System. Our State, Super State Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Michael Martirano, and Assistant State Superintendent of Schools, Kathy D'Antoni, who's in charge of the career and technical education programs in our state. I knew I'd get that one right. This council allows us to better align our resources and eliminate the bureaucratic silos that once kept us from integrating our workforce training programs so that we can provide the best and most effective services to all West Virginians. In order to move forward on this path toward a bright future, we must acknowledge the challenges that we currently face and the ones that lie ahead. And I'll be the first to admit, times are tough for our state and many of our people. As you probably know, just yesterday I had to deliver news about our state's budget that was truly disheartening and disappointing. As your governor, I take our state's finances as seriously as my own personal finances. So you know, you can only imagine how difficult it was for me to announce cuts that were the result of several factor, factors beyond our state's control. However, in looking toward the future, we can and we are addressing many of the challenges facing our state, especially those related to our state's workforce. We know West Virginia has the lowest worker participation rate in the nation, and our particip participation rates in both skilled training programs and post-secondary educational opportunities must also improve. Our employers also continue to battle the substance abuse epidemic to find drug-free workers, and we're working with them to combat this statewide problem. We recently launched the first ever statewide substance abuse call line, 1-844-HELP, H-E-L-P for WV, and we're already seeing hundreds of people calling and texting to receive information about the resources that we have available to help them, their friends, and their family with substance abuse. We acknowledge these problems and continue to tackle them on a number of fronts. I'm proud of the work that we have done and the progress that we have made to overcome these challenges. From early childhood to middle school to high school at, to post-secondary training and education, we now have more educational and workforce development programs in place than we ever did before. Anyone who has a desire for a job can do it, and we're here to help. Whether through a certificate or an apprenticeship program, a two-year or four-year degree, or a specialized retraining program, West Virginians have endless opportunities to succeed. Our comprehensive workforce development efforts begin at the earliest of ages. <clears throat> As we provide one of the nation's best pre-K programs and strive to ensure every West Virginia student can read at grade level by the third grade. Our My State, My Life initiative which I hope many of you have already seen, starts with encouraging our middle school students to chart a path toward success. Upon entering high school, our students then have the opportunity to participate in on-site skilled training through one of our many simulated work workplace environments where students collaborate in the form of business teams and learn high-demand skills in manufacturing, welding, and automotive technology just to name a few. We're also working with businesses and industries investing in West Virginia through our Sector Strategies Initiative to determine how our state's community and technical colleges can better align programs to meet business needs and workforce demands. A number of the companies investing in West Virginia have noticed these changes and are now offering on-the-job training opportunities as well that allow workers to learn the skills they need while earning money at the same time. We also have a number of new programs in place, like the Department of Natural Resources revised TANF program that, that leads uh, support and training to those receiving public assistance, giving them a hand up instead of just a handout, with the hopes of getting people back on their feet and on their way to a long-term, well-paying job. Through the state's dislocated worker program, people who have lost their jobs due to a downturn in the economy can also receive special assistance 
from Workforce West Virginia. In this instance, if more than 50 people are affected, a rapid response team is deployed to aid those in the group. But even if a smaller number are affected, like workers from a neighborhood grocery store, regional workforce investment boards still reach out and offer individualized assistance, including classroom, classroom training to up to $5,000 per person. Our workforce development efforts are also designed to help those who may have taken the wrong path, made some mistakes, and are now looking for new opportunities. Through our comprehensive justice reinvestment efforts, we're working to rehabilitate our state's offenders, giving them skills, training, and avenues they need to reintegrate into society and the workplace. We have a significant amount of money available for these specialized training programs, and West Virginia was just recently awarded a long-term unemployment grant to support our newest program, Let's Train WV. Thank you, Congressman. With over $6 million in federal funds, Let's Train WV is designed to get West Virginians who have exhausted their unemployment benefits back into the workforce while keeping the needs of our business and industry partners foremost in their minds. Employers can now receive grant funding to train new hires with reimbursement up to $10,000 per, per, per participant. This program provides employers with the opportunity to pick from eligible employees and train their workers at their work site. Now, as you can see, West Virginia has a great story to tell and each of these programs deserves its own chapter, which is why over the coming weeks, I plan to travel, travel across our state and share more information about how West Virginia is leading the way in workforce development efforts. During my final 15 months as your governor, my goal is to have every West Virginian know that we care about them and their future and that opportunities are available for them to succeed. Today, we're here to share this message with one of our state's most dedicated group of workers, our coal miners. We all know times are tough for the coal industry, and I remain committed to standing up for our miners, their families, and the communities this vital industry supports. And I assure you that I will continue to fight against overreaching federal regulations that threaten our miners, our coal industry, and our state's way of life. While I continue this fight, I also have worked hard to ensure that when it's needed, our coal miners have new opportunities to develop a bright and successful future right here at home. In April 2014, Workforce West Virginia received more than $5 million in national emergency grant funds from the U.S. Department of Labor to provide support to workers affected by layoffs and mine closures. This funding allowed us to successfully retrain nearly 1,000 co-workers. And when this funding was exhausted, West Virginia still had thousands of coal miners without jobs and families in needs. So I returned to the, to the Department of Labor and requested additional funding to support the needs of our residents. And today I'm pleased to announce our state has received more than $7 million in additional grant funding to continue these programs for our displaced coal miners and their families. This grant funding will provide tuition assistance up to $5,000 for classroom or online skilled training and will support 25 on-the-job training positions. In addition, it will offer allowances for coal miners and their families to help with costs of meals and travel and childcare. I know that I've highlighted several workforce programs today maybe too many to comprehend at one time. But fortunately, while we have worked to develop these opportunities, our team at Workforce West Virginia has also been working behind the scenes to develop a new one-stop shop for all of this information. As you'll see on TV over here, Workforce West Virginia has redesigned its website. It's called workforcewv.org to accommodate the different needs found among employers workers and family members. Information about each of the programs discussed today and much more, including a complete resource directory and application materials can be found in one convenient location online at workforcewv.org. 
We also have a few of our Workforce West Virginia employees with us today ready to assist anyone who wants to apply for a training program right here, right now. Workforce West Virginia offices can also be found in counties across the state to provide individualized help to those who need it. And I encourage anyone here today to take the time to explore this new website and share this resource among your colleagues and your peers. The work that we're doing is making a difference, and I look forward to continuing our momentum over the coming weeks and months. At this time, I'd like to invite Congressman Evan Jenkins to the podium. Congressman Jenkins has worked hard to help us secure this funding from a federal level, and I'm happy to have him with us today to say a few words. Congressman. Thank you very much, Governor. I appreciate it. You really did lay out quite a smorgasbord of efforts. Governor Tomlin has been tireless in his efforts, his administration, working for displaced uh, coal miners, working for all West Virginians and their families. It's uh, trying times, as Keith said from the outset. Uh, I've had the opportunity for nine months to represent the 3rd Congressional District. And uh, several months ago, I was contacted by the UMWA uh, Career Services Center. And they said, we want you to come take a look at who we are and what we do. And so I spent about a half a day uh, spending time on their websites, visiting a class of, of, of test takers, meeting with the administrators, and came away uh, understanding that here's a program that started with just funding for 200 displaced uh, workers in an emergency, and this is an emergency. And they were able to get a 500 additional slots, so it had 700 to 900 coal miners that their livelihoods depended on this program. And they shared with me several months ago that, you know, Congressman, this is about to end. And it's going to end next uh, June 2016, but there are programs that last more than seven, eight, nine months. And every day that goes by, that's a program that comes off the list that we can put a displaced coal miner into for training. So, working with the Tomlin administration, which has been awesome, working with the UMWA, we all have been candidly pushing very hard to the Department of Labor to not only, they're smiling, not only say renew it, but expand it. And working through Workforce West Virginia, it was expanded. And not only to the thousand people that the governor uh, uh, accurately ref references, they now have, through this award, an additional 500 slots. So we are now in the 14 to 1,500 coal miners. And coal families, because it's not just related to the coal miner, it's their families too. So it's been an honor to work with the Tomlin administration, Workforce West Virginia, and to see firsthand the terrific job that the UMWA Career Services not only do we work to try to get this program not only renewed and expanded, but we look forward to working with the UMWA to take this best practice that has worked so well in West Virginia to the national level. We can be a leader, and we look forward to continuing to work with the Tomlin administration and all the people. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we are suffering tough times. We're going to fight every uh, step of the way to get coal back on its feet, but we're not forgetting uh, the men and women in the coal industry uh, that are the victims uh, of a challenging situation. We're going to continue to fight for you each and every day. Thank you. Thank you again, Congressman, for all your help. You've been there every time we've called. We certainly do appreciate it. Now I'd like to invite Stanley Stewart to the podium. Stanley began his career as a West Virginia coal miner, but like so many others, was affected by the downturn in the industry. Fortunately, because of this funding, he was able to get training and enroll in West Virginia State University. He's set to graduate in May with a degree in education, and Stanley would like to speak to tell you about his experiences. Stanley, thanks for being here. <laughs> As the governor said, my name is Stanley Stewart, and I'm currently a biology education major at West Virginia State University. 
Uh, but before that, I was a, a dislocated coal miner. I worked 13 years underground, and uh, I thought many times over how I would love to be able to go back to school and continue my education and make a career change. But working underground and other coal miners will uh, verify this. Whether it's because of the handsome salary that you're making, or uh, maybe it's just that after a while you start feeling like you can't do anything else. Uh, you never really think that those daydreams can become reality. So, on May 13th, 2014, my mind shuts down. And uh, big choices to make. I have a wife and two children, you know, so I do what everybody else does. I start filling out resumes. And uh, then a friend of mine mentioned the UMWA Career Center and uh, the National Emergency Grant. I said, what's this? And uh, found out that they would give me money to go back to school. Now, even though I was a third shift mine foreman and I made a handsome salary, I still couldn't afford to put myself back through school. But after I talked with them and realized this is really a possibility, before I realized that I was back in college and uh, making the career change that I've wanted to do for a long time. So uh, the, the big deal is that uh, it's fantastic that we're getting, in West Virginia, we're getting more, uh, more money to help other coal miners like myself because it truly made something that was just a dream for me a reality. And uh, I'm thankful, so thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Stanley, and good luck uh, with all your future endeavors. We're very proud of you. And that's things you know, that we really want to see is those minors or their families who have been affected to come forward and take advantage of this opportunity to get an education and to get a second chance at life. Uh, now I'd like to, we'd like to hear from uh, John Dunlap. John? John's a, another former coal miner who, because of his funding, is now receiving training at Bridge Valley Community and Technical College and is also on track to graduate in May with a degree in com computer science technology. John? Thank you. Hello, my name is John Dunlap, and uh, I'm a college student, believe it or not, at 50 years old. Uh, first off, Governor, I'd like to thank you and your administration for supporting this so important program. This is absolutely a, it takes a lot of weight off of our shoulders, knowing that you're behind us. And thank you so much. And thank you, Workforce West Virginia, for being there in those times that when we need you most. Thank you, UMWA Career Centers, for being on the spot. Those folks, I'm telling you, went far and beyond the call of duty when it came to helping me get my funding to go back to school uh, this past uh, fall. I was on a deadline, a tight deadline, and those folks really came through for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And Workforce West Virginia, you guys are, are the same, above and beyond. Thirty some odd years ago, I decided that uh, coal mining was going to be a part of life for me. As Stanley mentioned, the salaries were handsome. The security of having a coal mining job was very stable. But then, 30 some odd years later, we come to a point to where the coal industry as a whole has taken blow after blow after blow. We as coal miners have learned to ride out those ups and those downs, those highs and those lows. But this low is a low that is going to be hard to recover from. And for myself, I've decided that the mining industry, I could fool myself by going back and maybe trying to find a job, but after hearing even today's news of the 2,600 warrant notices that were issued, that is so disheartening. 
my heart really sank when I, when I read that in the, in the media today. But I decided as an ex-coal miner or a dislocated coal miner that I needed a career change. If I, if I were going to be realistic about it, it, now was the time. I'd always said that if anything ever happened to, to my coal job, that I would pursue something different. So through the help of the, the good folks that I mentioned just a little earlier, I'm able to go back to school. I'm able to, pr to help provide for my family in a different way now. And that, is, that feels so good because being without a job, not knowing where you're going to get the money to pay those bills at next month that are going to come due, you know, that's the funny thing about it. Not so funny, really. Those bills never stop. They keep coming, even though you are out of work. Being employed and trying to go to school is very difficult, as most of you know. On one hand, you're earning money for your family, you're paying your bills, you're making mortgage payments, car payments, and whatever else. On the other hand, while you're working, it's hard to find the time to go back to school and to make that career change. And then we flip the coin over on the other side, and now we've got all the time in the world, but we have no money. So this program, this is absolutely worth every dime spent. I thank you, governor, organizations, Keep working hard for these coal miners because there's a lot more of these coal miners that are on the way. I feel sure. And keep pushing to get more grant money for these, these folks to go back to school on because they need it. Congressman Jenkins, I forgot to mention you a while ago, thank you so much for pushing for these, these grants. It takes people like you to help people like me. Thank you. Well, John and, and Stanley, I want to thank you both for being here today and sharing your success stories with us. And uh, uh, both uh, Stanley and, and John represent how this uh, grant funding can and will help so many of our state's miners getting the retraining they need to establish a successful uh, career here at home. Our final speaker today has been a tireless advocate for West Virginia and our workforce training programs. And as I mentioned earlier, Millie Marshall is president of uh, Toyota Manufacturing West Virginia is here and will share a few words. And, and the thing I say about Millie, she works for a company who has been very supportive, especially our community college and different workforce training programs because Toyota, Millie, and, and her company really knows the importance of have, having a good skilled workforce because they're competing not only with people in Detroit or someplace else, but people from around the world because their products go all around the world. And it's one of those things that uh, Millie and, and Toyota have really stepped to the forefront. Their company have come with innovative programs to help our people get the kind of training and skills they need to be productive citizens. And, you know, whether it's for employees uh, for Toyota or somebody else, they're there to help because they realize that, you know, we've all got to give our people the best opportunity we can with the skills they need for the jobs of today. And for our two coal miners, you know, let me just say, we've had discussion in the Workforce Council about people do not want to leave their home or either can't leave their home because they can't sell their home to, to relocate. But so many of our jobs are available here, and employers every day, whether it be in manufacturing or, or whatever it may be, healthcare, education, are all looking for good, solid employees. We know that we have some of the hardest working people in, in the world right here, but what we're trying to do is give them the skills they need to be successful, to be proud West Virginians. Ladies and gentlemen, this time it's indeed my pleasure to introduce Billy Marshall, president of Toyota Manufacturing West Virginia.
Thank you, Governor Tomlin. It is a uh, pleasure and an honor to be here today. As he stated, this is something that I'm very, very passionate about and really uh, want to contribute to make things better. One of the things that Governor uh, Tomlin mentioned early on is that it is, frankly, very concerning that federal regulations are creating a business environment here in West Virginia which has such a huge impact on an industry that has for so long been the backbone of what I consider to be the great state of West Virginia. So as we look forward, this workforce development has never been more important as it is right now. We have to work on getting these displaced workers transitioned into other types of industries and other types of jobs. So there is clearly a need to transition the employees from the mining industry to other good paying, I think you both were very uh, politically correct as you said, healthy, uh, um, wages or handsome wages. Uh, we all have to provide for our families and it's very important that we're able to provide those type of jobs so that you can continue to provide for your families. And industries such as manufacturing or as Governor Tomlin mentioned, there's education. There's a lot of industries out there in terms of um, uh, nursing and, and those type things. So, you know, I'm very proud to work in a state that has a governor such as Governor Tomlin that is very, very passionate, as uh, uh, Keith Burdett said earlier, responding so quickly to the needs of our workforce in West Virginia and making the changes and, and putting the efforts forward to not only meet today's demand and the transition that we need to, to make, but also the future. So I really do thank you. Um, it, it's critical to have somebody in your position. And Congressman Jenkins, the same thing. We, we've really got to fight for this. And the workforce development as we move forward with that is critical to keep our state, our great state of West Virginia, and the economy going. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share today. And um, I appreciate your all's time. So thank you. Once again, thank you, Millie, and once again, I want to thank all of you for coming today. If, if there's any questions, uh, m most of the members of the Workforce Council are here who have been working with me hand in hand for the last two years to get where we're at today, and, and we'll continue to do everything we can to, to move this state forward. Uh, but uh, any questions you may have, they're here. They can answer the questions because they know what each other's doing now. It used to be they were in, were in little silos and didn't look out the window very much. Today, they're all around the table working together for a better West Virginia. So thank you all for coming today. We certainly appreciate that. Let's get the word out to those miners and their families that there is help available, and we want them to take advantage of it to be able to, uh, be able to continue to support their families in West Virginia. Appreciate you all coming today. Thank you.